All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Mr. 500 here, Mr. Delgado here doing it big. And hopefully you could be doing it big right now when we start going over some of these new problems we're going to be attacking today. And what kind of problems may they be? Well, I'm happy that you've asked because what we're going to be looking at right now is going to be some of the good stuff. Some trapezoid problems. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. So trapezoids are one of the easiest quadrilaterals to work with, but... Sometimes this comp this form is a little complicated. Okay, so that's why I wanted to go ahead and work on some of these problems with you guys Make sure that we could get it on point and so we could be successful So you could be successful and you could just be the best that you are. All right, so let's get this thing started Let's get the shindig on the road. Okay, first things first trapezoid has two Parallel sides as you can see right there side on the top I'll show you right there that side right there side at the bottom parallel the other sides aren't always going to be, you know, perpendicular to those parallel sides. To be honest, trapezoids do not have perpendicular sides to those parallel lines. That's what makes them so, so interesting. All right. Well, this problem, you know, is just an introduction to a trapezoid. So perimeter, the first thing we got to attack perimeter. What we got to do with perimeter is just add all sides. Now be careful. We're talking about the sides here. We're not talking about the inside of this. We're talking about the sides. So what we're gonna have to do is get one of our bases, add it with the other base. Notice how I'm using the terminology, the first base and the second base here, because there's two different bases in this problem. We're gonna add it with that side and with that side. I hope you notice that these sides are the same. You know that 1281? So that's really makes this an isosceles trapezoid because the sides are the same. Now I'm gonna get my handy dandy calculator right here. And all we're gonna do is just add up those numbers. Now you may be asking yourself, Mr. Elgato, why, why, oh why, didn't we add that 1198 and a half? Well, because that's not the outside of the trapezoid. Remember, perimeter is the distance around a figure. It's not what's inside of a figure. Now that, that 1198 and a half is actually going to be super crucial when we do start doing these area formulas. It's going to be incredibly important because as you can see, there's a right angle right here. There's a right angle right there. And that right angle basically tells us those are the dimensions that we're going to be using, those perpendicular lines right there. But as of right now, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to be doing none of that because that, that right angle means nothing to us. And now that I've added them all up, you know what, let me do it one more time because I've been talking so much, I didn't even realize if I added them up correctly. So I added up all my sides and I end up with a good, easy answer of 9.21 times 10 to the third, or 9,210. All right, easy problem, but you know, we gotta make sure we can handle it, okay? Now this one here, this one is gonna be our first area formula right here. An area of a trapezoid it's a little bit you know different than the other formulas that we've seen thus far remember how I said there's two bases well we're gonna be using them in this area formula because the formula for a trapezoid is basically the first base plus the second base then we multiply it by the height and then we get it and divide it by two we cut it in half now sometimes we like to do those things in different orders and so forth but technically the formula just remains the same what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to get 12.8777, which is our first base. We're going to go ahead and add it to 14.8777. Now, I say it's my first base, and this is the second base, that 14.8777, because, well, the numbers are pretty arbitrary. It doesn't matter which one's the first or the second one. What matters here is that we're going to go ahead and multiply it by the height. And what's the height in this problem, you may ask? It's going to be 9.4227. And then we get all of that, cut it in half, divide it by 2. And so we go ahead and substitute those numbers into our formula. And that's it. It's as easy as that. We go ahead and add our bases. 9.4227. We go ahead and multiply that, divide it by 2. And we get our answer for this beautiful problem. 131. Or... 1.31 times 10 to the second. 
All right. So that's that. Easy, easy work here. All right. Now, this trapezoid looks a little different, but I don't want you to freak out. It's still essentially a trapezoid. We're still figuring out the area. The area is base 1 plus base 2 times the height. And then we're going to go ahead and cut that in half. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. You may hear it in other other words, okay? But um, sometimes what you could basically say we're doing is we're finding the average of the bases and then we're multiplying it by the height, okay? Now, you may see four different numbers here. In that other problem we just did, there was only three numbers. But here we have all four, all four of the sides. Now, you got to be able to identify the height. And that's why I told you we always look for the right angles. Of course, the parallel sides show us the bases. But some people might pick 62 for the height. And those people would be completely wrong because the height of this problem is 58. So we substitute that. We're going to do 67 plus 89. Again, we could find the average of the bases. And, you know, multiply it by 58, cut it in half at the end. Now, I say the average of the bases because some people like to divide by 2 before they multiply by the height. And, and then technically, you still get the same answer. But, you know, I, I just like to do the formula the way I, you know, usually set it up. But, you know, if you know math, you could probably figure out that dividing by 2 in the beginning of the problem, like after you've added the two bases, is technically going to be the same answer as if you multiply by height and then divide by 2. All right. So hopefully you got that again, 4,520. Okay, now this one might throw you off, might throw you off, because we got that little right triangle there. It's still a trapezoid though, it's still a trapezoid, and it might throw you off because you look at the height and you're like, oh my god, there's no number here. But you know what, this is one of those things where you gotta understand that this side right here is right there. It's right there, it's the same side, it's the same side. They're trying to make you feel. They're trying to see if you could do the problem. Well, let's see. We're going to show them we could do that problem. Let's go ahead and set up that formula. Area equals. Now, of course, I'm going to write it the different way. I'm going to write it a different way that I've seen it before. Because, you know, sometimes you may have different things here. And you don't want to know. You, you want to know if you're doing it right. And, and essentially, it's going to be the same thing. What we're going to do is get our bases. Let me go in and substitute. We're going to get 6.15 plus 7.25 notice the bases are the parallel sides parallel sides remember they they're lines that never intersect we could cut that in half and then get our answer multiplied by the height of 5.27 now if you didn't see this right here you may overthink this problem you may start doing some pythagorean theorem here and pythagorean theorem could still get us what we want but in all honesty we don't need to do all that stuff we don't need to do all that stuff because, you know, it's about the conservation of length, conservation of this distance. And since this is, you know, what it is, I think we got ourselves a good answer here. We got ourselves that good answer. So anyways, we add those up to divide and then 5.27 multiply, boom, boom, call it a day, 35.3 or 3.53 times 10 to the first. Look, trapezoids are pretty easy. But you still got to make sure you could do it by writing the formula and substituting correctly. Base 1 plus base 2. Now, really, I'm not going to do this divide by 2 until the very end of the problem. I just wanted to show you that you could do it. It is possible to do it. But, I, you know, I, I get into a habit here. And sorry that I already went ahead and wrote that height. Actually, in the future, I'm going to just start substituting because you've seen this formula enough that you could start writing it down. You start writing it down. Because, you know, we don't want to spend all this time writing down these formulas and stuff. So our first step, we're going to go ahead and put 0 0.952. Notice I started with the bottom base. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you start with the bottom base or the top. It doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and add it to 0.526. Okay, we're going to add it to 0 0.526. Doesn't matter if you put the trailing 0, I mean the leading 0 in the front. Doesn't really matter there. Once we get that answer, we're going to go ahead and multiply it by 0.499 because the 0.499 is the height. As you can see, that right angle is apparent. It is apparent in this problem. And then we're going to get all that divided by 2. We're going to go ahead and divide that by 2. 
okay? And so we look like we got ourselves a good answer. 3.69 times 10 to the negative first, or 0.369. I mean, it seems completely reasonable, reasonable answer, because, well, if you think about it this way, we're gonna get half of the average of the bases, okay? And multiply it by the height. Well, the average of the bases, if we're looking at about 0.5 and 0.9-ish, you know, it's gonna be about 0.7. It's about 0.7, a little bit higher than 0.7, okay? Notice how I rounded these things, okay? I mean, it could have been 0.75, I mean, if you rounded that 952 up to one hole. Now, we're gonna get that 0.75 and we're gonna cut it essentially in half because the height is of rounded to about 0.5. We're gonna multiply, and so, so at the end of the day, you know, 0 0.37, 0 0.369 seems completely reasonable. But see, that's the thing. You gotta make sure that you understand reasonableness. And that's why I'm here to go ahead and go through some problems with y'all. All right, so here's the deal about this next problem. When I first saw this problem, I thought to myself, man, oh man, they are missing a key word here because there are so many ways we could attempt this problem. Of course, some people may say, but Mr. Delgado, I mean, it looks, it looks, it looks even. But to be honest, what do you mean by even? What do you mean by, well, it looks like both sides are congruent. Notice how I put those lines there. It does, it does, it does. But any little shift of these sides makes this problem a little harder. So that's why there is a key word missing here. What's that key word? It starts with I. Isosceles, that's what I, I hope you said it. Hope you said it. Yeah, it's supposed to be an isosceles trapezoid, okay? If it's an isosceles trapezoid, we would have no problem solving it, okay? No problem solving it. But now we're gonna have to make an assumption. When this problem first came out a couple years ago, I remember this problem. And there were some issues because you couldn't, you couldn't be sure how long it was from here to here. You couldn't be sure. Because if this, this one could have been, for example, this one could have been four, and from here to here, it could have been two. And that essentially changes both of these, okay? But once they throw out that this is an isosceles, well, then it becomes pretty easy, okay? So what you gotta be able to see is that there is some extra piece right here. You can see it right here to here, and you can see that same piece from here to here. You gotta figure out what those are gonna be. And the easiest way to figure out the difference of these bases, well, I just said it, it's the difference. So we're gonna get 29.8, and subtract 23.8 and we get a total difference of six but remember that's six that six that 29.8 minus the 23.8 that six that we got well it's gonna be cut in half so really that means this side is three and this side is three now we can figure out this problem using our good old friend Mr. Pythagoras, yeah, I'll see you over there, Pythagoras. Yeah, I'll be right with you in a bit. We're gonna be using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Notice, we have both legs here. We got the three, we got the four. We're missing the hypotenuse. But Mr. Delgado, this ain't a triangle. Well, as you could see, we could imagine that triangle, that right triangle right there. So, we're gonna go ahead and do three squared plus four squared equals to c squared now if you know mathematics you know your triples this is a super easy problem because 9 plus 16 equals to c squared and that turns into 25 equals to c squared so we square root both sides and guess what our hypotenuse here is gonna be 5 so that means this one and this one are 5 so now we can go ahead and find the perimeter Okay, now I say these triples because the three, four, five triangle is a well-known Pythagorean triple, all right? So if you're in math, you're gonna see these triples a lot. You're gonna see them a lot, so hopefully you don't get freaked out. But as you could see, our correct answer here is gonna be 63.6, or 6.36 times 10 to the first. Easy work. All right, so this one is kind of a hybrid. It's kind of a hybrid of what we just did, but this one I like a lot more because this one right here, and I apologize for my sloppy little line. I'll try it one more time. I'll try to be as clean as I can, but you know what? I'm not the best at drawing straight line. Well, that was a little better at least. We could actually see the right triangle right here. I mean, it's gonna be right there, bam, bam. And this right here, from here to here, is something we could calculate, something we could calculate. 
We already know this leg. This leg's 34.7, okay? That leg is pretty easy. That's 34.7. But what we need to do is, again, find a difference between our bases. Notice the bases in, on the bottom and the top this time. They flipped that trapezoid to the side, and now you got the bases on the left and right. But how you can tell where the bases are? Parallel lines. Remember that. Parallel lines. So let's go ahead and find our difference here. We're going to get 15.8. And we're going to subtract 9.2 from it. And guess what? We got ourselves this leg right here is about 6.6. .6. Remember, the work is 15.8 minus 9.2. 6.6. Now that we got that, we're looking for this missing side right there. Sorry, you got to have a good time here. You know, you got to have a good time. So we gotta find that missing side here. We got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We got our a and b here. Now this one isn't a Pythagorean triple. I don't know what these are. So we're gonna have to do 6.6 .6 square it and add it to 34.7 squared. And that's gonna give us c squared. So let me go ahead and bust that in my calculator right now. Hopefully you got that ready to go too. So we can figure this problem out together. I'm gonna go ahead and talking while we're doing this. Now look, I'm gonna tell you, don't write the number down. Remember what I told you about this, don't write it down. You wanna make sure that you save it in the calculator's memory or you just leave it in the calculator screen. But what I got so far is roughly, and I'm gonna hit yellow show so I could write at least seven digits, okay? So we could be in the same, actually it is, it goes only to two decimal spaces, okay? But this is what I've got so far and that's gonna equal C squared. So remember our last step, last step Pythagorean theorem? Square root this bad boy right there. Bam, bam. Hit square root. Now, this one's going to be crazy here. You don't want to write this one because once we start square rooting these numbers that are like non perfect squares, such as the one we just square rooted, we're going to end up with something. If you hit yellow show, you're going to end up with something real crazy. Now, I'm not going to write all of it down, okay, because I, I don't I don't, I don't have the capability to see every single one of the digits. But it's roughly 35 and all those little decimal spaces, okay? And that's going to be roughly to see. Now, again, I wouldn't even write this down. I'd keep it in the calculator memory. Why? So we could just go ahead and add 9.2, 34.7, and 15.8. We just add those numbers and we got ourselves our perimeter, 95.0. Or 9.50 times 10 to the first. Easy work. Now... This trapezoid problem, as you can see, is a little different. We've got this given to us. They've given us the area. And they gave us base one. They gave us base two. But something that seems missing is this height. This height. So what we're gonna have to do is not work forwards here. We're gonna work backwards. But you know what? Hard work pays off and we can do some of that hard work so we could go ahead and get these problems right. So remember our formula, area equals base one plus base two times the height, cut it in half. Now we're looking for the height. So we gotta undo every single one of these bad boys. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both sides by two. We're gonna multiply both sides by two. Guess what happens to the twos on the right? They cancel. Now we have two areas equals to base one plus base two. That's in parentheses multiplied by the height. Now, we don't want that either. We're almost getting there though, but we're not there yet. What we need to do is we need to cancel out that base one plus base two being multiplied. And how do we do that? Well, I just showed you. I mean, I drew the purple little line represents the fraction time. We're gonna divide both sides by base one plus base two. Whatever we do on the left, we gotta do to the right. And notice what happens here, ladies and gentlemen. Base one and base two. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Actually, I just noticed something real wrong here. Well, I probably could've. I probably could've just done that fraction bar, that slash, but I put it as a multiplication and I did that wrong. I apologize for that. What we should've done is wrote another fraction bar on the right side. But as you can see, these do end up canceling. And now we got our final formula here. We got ourselves 2a divided by base one plus base two is now equal to the height. So what I'm gonna do, and hopefully what you're gonna do, is go ahead and substitute this. So we're gonna go ahead and substitute this. Let me use a black pen right here. We're gonna do two times 
3.33 times 10 to the seventh. We're gonna go ahead and get that answer divided by our base one added with base two. And once we finish dividing that, our answer is gonna be the height. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and do it. Two, enter, 3.33 times 10 to the seventh, we're gonna multiply that. We're gonna get 4,000, add it to 12,666, and then we're gonna hit divide. And guess what? Our height for this trapezoid is gonna be 4.00 times 10 to the third, or some of us like to just put 4,000. That's it. Working backwards is super easy, ladies and gentlemen. Super easy but we gotta practice and we're gonna get good at it. We're gonna get good, don't you worry. We're gonna get good at it, but we gotta practice. All right, we got the same pretty much thing headed up. So really, I'm just gonna write that hybrid formula already, the one that we undid. We basically manipulated the original area equation and we were able to come up with that new formula. Base one plus base two is gonna be divided from two areas. So let's go ahead and set this up, okay? Let me go ahead and use a change of a different color. What we're gonna do is two times 2.30 times 10 to the negative six. Get that answer divided by the sum of 0 0.00285 and 0 0.0014. Well, we don't have to put that zero at the end if you're able to see it in time, but you know, I'm gonna go ahead and write that zero. Okay, make sure it's a zero, not like that six I'm over here trying to draw. And that's gonna equal to the height. So let's go ahead and set it up. 2.30 times 10 to the negative six power. You better put negative, if you don't, we're gonna end up with something that's really not gonna make sense. Multiply it by that two, multiply it by that two. Now we're gonna get our bases here and we're gonna go ahead and add them together and then divide them. And now we got ourselves our height. It's gonna be 1.08 times 10 to the negative third, or 0 0.00108, okay? Now look, me personally, I would've probably just written scientific notation. Well, I've done to the negative third. I could, I could do negative three, but anything bigger than negative three, like negative, I mean, when I say bigger, I mean the absolute value of the exponent being bigger than negative three. But anything, I guess, smaller than negative three as an exponent, man, I wouldn't even mess with that. I just write scientific notation. But at the end of the day, it's up to you, and you gotta do what works best for you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to tell you what works, because you're the one taking these tests, you're the one that's gonna be a success, you're the one that's gonna be the best. So you figure it out. I'm just here to help guide you, and that's what I do. And I like it, I like guiding my students, So because we're gonna do a great job. Because at the end of the day, it's all about that education, all right? So anyways, we got that two areas. Remember, we undid that area formula. We undid it. And we got that two areas, and we're gonna go ahead and divide that by the sum of both bases, okay? So let's go ahead and do it. Let's substitute correctly here, okay? Let's substitute correctly. I got two times 36.81. We're gonna get that and divide it by 5.55 plus 9.55. And that's gonna give us our height. So let's see what we're gonna go ahead and do. Let me go ahead and type this in my calculator. Here we got two. We're gonna do 36.81, multiply it. We're gonna do 5.55. We're gonna do 9.55. Add them both together and divide it. And apparently our height's gonna be 4.88. Again, scientific notation, 4.88 times 10 to the zero. But if it's a zero power, don't even write it. Just put 4.88. Easy work, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see, we got a lot of these problems working backwards. And then, you know, you, you've seen these numbers. I mean, I've seen a lot of 38s. I've seen a lot of 38s here, okay? There's tons of 38s. These are not difficult once you get the hang of them. That's why they put them as problem 38s. You know, sometimes a 37 comes here or there, but really the 38s all the time. Like they're in the beginning of the test, you know? They're in the beginning of the test. They're some of the first story in geometry problems. Well. Not story problems, but they they are for real some of the first geometry problems we see. And it's very important that we could handle these types of questions, not only by working forwards the basic area, but by undoing the area and looking for specific pieces, such as this case. It doesn't tell us here, but I hope you can see it. This is the height.
that's the height. And that's what we're going to be looking for. So we're going to get 379363.5 and double it. Then we're going to get 592 and add it to 785. And then we're going to go ahead and divide that from our doubled area. And guess what our height should roughly be in this problem? 551. Or 5.51 times 10 to the second. Easy work, ladies and gentlemen. Easy work. So we see another trapezoid. Look, I just threw a ton of trapezoids in a row. Why? Because you got to be able to handle them. You got to be able to handle them. Now, I'm not going to write the formula anymore, but I'm just going to write my per correct substitution. And hopefully, look, ladies and gentlemen, I don't mind if you go ahead and just pause this, skip forward, and just see if you're getting these answers correct. Because at the end of the day, I think by now you got the skills to pay these calculated bills. Do you know what I'm saying? And, you know, once you got that under your belt, well, you got another tool in your toolkit, and we're going to make sure that we could do what we got to do to be the best. Because you're already there. You're already doing it. So we're going to go ahead and double this area. We're going to get one of our bases and add it to the other base. doesn't really matter what order. But then we're going to divide. Oh, I like this. I like this answer. I like this answer. <laughs> it's the 956, baby. Can't mess around with that. 956 right up in here. It's 956 or, well, of course, 9.56 times 10 to the zero. But it's 956, baby. Well, it's a 9.56, but you get the point. You know what I'm saying? You get the point. It's close enough. It's close enough. You know what I'm saying? So it's that 9.56, baby. All right. So we got ourselves a beautiful right trapezoid. Oh, notice I gave you that vocabulary. It's called a right trapezoid. Not a pipe trapezoid. Come on, Mr. D. What do you do? Come on, Mr. 500. What are you doing here? It's not a pipe. It's a right. <laughs> but yeah, we got that right trapezoid here. We're going a good time. We're having fun with this bad boy. And we're going to go ahead and double that area yet again. We're going to add our bases and divide it by that product from, you know, the area. And that number two. So we're going to go ahead and get the quotient of double the area and the sum of the bases. You got to be able to talk that math. You got to be able to talk that math correctly. Because the words we say really do matter here. They do matter. Whoa, be careful. I almost put 138.33. That one little mistake game over we get this wrong so make sure you're typing these things incorrectly but you type them incorrectly we got no problems you're gonna be a success you know what i'm saying so we're gonna get that multiplied by two we got 10.77 we got 14.82 we're gonna divide and guess what our height's gonna be for this problem 10.9 or 1.09 times 10 to the first gotta make sure you know how to do both ways write it both ways do we always want to write it both ways no we don't but we got to so as you can see, there's a lot of similar questions on trapezoids, and there are a lot of 38s, man, a lot of 38s. But this is an easy problem that if you ever see a trapezoid working forwards or backwards, you're gonna be able to knock it out of the park. Easy, easy work. I mean, it ain't even work. This is having fun because we ain't working hard for this. We ain't struggling here no more. This is this is stuff that we could do, and not only do it, but be the best at it, you know what I'm saying? And that's what you want to do. You always want to be the best. Remember, I'm here to be your personal trainer for that math. And I'm here building you up, getting those muscles on point, you know what I'm saying? Pump to pump, pump to pump. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying, man. We're not talking about literally pumping these biceps up, you know? But I'm talking about pumping that mind muscle up, man. Make it as strong as it could be, you know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and get this when you go ahead and do your correct formula. Completely reasonable answer. We got about, what, 24.25. Well, it's almost 25, but it's 24.9. Oh, man. I bet you SpongeBob and Patrick will be having a blast with this. What's funnier than 24? 20. Wait, I was trying to do 25. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Man, we got that. Hey, wow, I think I've seen this one before, man. I think we've seen it before. Hmm. It's all right. It's all good. So remember, 3.33 times 10 to the 7th. We're going to go ahead and double that bad boy. We're going to go ahead and add it to 4,000 plus 1,266. And that's it. And that's it. We're going to do this real quick. Pay our bills. What do you mean pay the bills? 
well, we got these skills and we're writing a check that we know we could cash because we getting these problems correct. And at the end of the day, we are gonna be a success. Now, of course, this really ain't about me. It's about you. It's about you making sure you got this. You got it. You got it. That's what I'm here to help you with, man. That's what I'm here to do. Now, this is the only problem I see right here that has been different than every other one we did when we were working backwards. It's the only problem I've seen so far. Because as you can see, the height is actually right here. And they gave us one of the base is. It took me a while to say is, right? The base is. But they didn't give us the other base. So we're not going to use the same formula, but we are going to use that same area formula and undo the work so we can see what the heck's going to go on with this. You know what I'm saying? But that's why we got no math. The more math we know, the easier this is. So let's check it out. We're going to have our area formula, our initial formula, base one plus base two multiplied by the height. Cut it in half. That's a formula thus far. So the first thing we're going to undo let me bust out, is times two both sides. What happens to my twos? They cancel on the right. We got a new formula. Two areas equals base one plus base two being multiplied by the height. Now, before, remember when we moved base one and base two over at the same time, we moved it from the right to the left at the same time? Well, we can't do this yet. Because we're not looking for both bases. We're only looking for one of the bases here. We're only looking for one of them. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to undo that height first. Okay, so what do you mean by undo the height? Well, we're going to divide both sides by H this time. Okay, we're going to divide both sides by H. You already know what's next. My H is on the right cancel. And we got ourselves in a whole new form. Well, it's not wholly new. It's not completely new. But our formula has changed now. Now, we got two areas divided by the height is now equal to the first base plus the second base. But we're close now, we real close. There's only one thing left to do, one thing left to do. So I'm looking for base one or base two, it don't matter. So we're gonna have to do the opposite of adding base two, we're gonna subtract it. But whatever we do on the right, we gotta do to the left. Now look, this one's a little bit awkward for me because I really don't got a lot of space here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a minus b2 right here okay it's not going to be huge but we'll read it. we'll rewrite it right now but what happens to my bases my base twos well they cancel out positive base two minus base two leaves us a big old nada a nada rooney a nothing you know what i'm saying nothing zilch zipperoos but you know what it does leave us though with it leaves us with that correct formula to find that missing base so it's going to be two areas divided by height Getting that quotient answer and finding the difference with base 2 gives us our missing base, which is base 1. Now that we got that info, we can go ahead and start substituting this. So we're going to do 2. Well, I'll go ahead and move it over here so I can make sure we got this. 2 times my total area, which is 1,181. 1, we're going to get that number. Uh-oh, I don't like that line, man. I'm getting a little sloppy with my lines. We're going to divide that by the height, which is 44.8. And then at the end of this problem, since we have already done all this work, we're going to have to subtract that base to get our missing base. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and set it up. 1181 multiplied by 2, 44.8. We're going to find that quotient of those. And then we're going to get 29.1 and subtract it. Ladies and gentlemen, completely reasonable answer. I got an answer of, and hopefully you got it too. You want to tell it to me? Nah, that's wrong. That's wrong. Nah, you did it wrong. Nah, I'm just joking. I don't know what you said, but hopefully you said the right one, which is 23.6. Or 2.36 times 10 to the first. Ladies and gentlemen, trapezoids are easy. Trapezoids are easy. Remember that. Trapezoids are easy. Trapezoids are easy. Trapezoids are easy. Trapezoids are easy. Nah, I'm just messing with you. We don't need to be doing all those dance moves. You'll see them soon enough, though. Dancing with the Stars coming soon. You know, well, maybe you don't know. But pretty soon you'll be seeing what we do know. All right, but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, trapezoids are real easy. 
just gotta work hard. We gotta be able to make sure that we set the formulas correctly. We gotta know our initial formulas. And sometimes they throw a little curveball at us. Sometimes we're gonna work backwards. Sometimes we're gonna have to use the Pythagorean theorem and find something. But you know what? That's all easy. It's all easy because you got the skills. You got that math knowledge, and we're gonna make it happen. All right. So thank you for watching. Hopefully we have a good night. All right. Peace out. Oh man, nobody put the transition out. Come on, man. You're helping me out here. You gotta put the transition right there. There you go. There you go. Come on, man. You're making me look all savage over here. I'm over here making these faces and stuff. I don't know what's going on. Eh. Man.